Hello, and welcome to Now You're Cooking with Gas. This video is about setting multiple targets while holding the fire button, and then firing a swarm of missiles at those targets on release. We will start by creating the swarm missile, which surprisingly is named BP swarm missile for this we're going to just create a cube we'll scale this down to 0 0.5 0 0.1 0 0.1 I'm gonna make it the root add another cube this one will be scaled to 0.2, 1 and 1. And then we'll just move it over here. And there we go. Thank you for coming to my video about how to create a match in Unreal. Next, we'll add a projectile movement component. And before I forget, I'll go back to this one, turn collision to no collision. And the base one we want our usual projectile setup. So custom object type of projectile and should not come by, collide with other projectiles. For the projectile movement component, we want to set the speeds to 1000. And we're going to check rotation follows velocity. Now this will be a homing projectile, and luckily Unreal has some built-in functionality for that. We want to set is homing projectile, and then set the acceleration appropriately. This needs to be a fairly large number for you to notice it. Um, and this will determine how quickly the missile can uh, turn. We're going to start with 3,000. In the event graph, we want event hit. And this is going to spawn the BP explosion from that video. We want this at the hit location, and then to destroy the missile. Next, we're going to create the widget blueprint. User widget, call this WBP. Target arrow. And as you can see here, I already imported a very nicely drawn arrow. This uh, widget blueprint is simply just a canvas panel with a centered image. I'm holding Control Shift for the center here. Just want to make this square and add that arrow. I'm going to create a blueprint to show the widget. This will also be an actor. It is just BP target arrow. This will just have a widget component. The widget class is set to target arrow. It will be in world space, so it'll just be uh, placed on top of the uh, the target. Um, however, because it's in world space, we want to make sure that it is facing the player. So when we spawn this object, we're going to set the owner to the uh, player character, so that we can control drag, drag out widget, call set world location 
delete that, and then set world rotation. Now we're going to use a look at function. In this case, it finds look at rotation. This takes a start and target. We're going to split both of these because we do not want to use the Z value. The start will be this actor's location. We also can split this, drag in the X and Y. We want to get the owner. And also get actor location. It's always a good idea to make your blueprints look pretty, because you never know who's going to look at them. And then, of course, the last piece, the gameplay ability. So this is a base class of GG gameplay ability. I'm going to call this GA Fire Swarm Missiles. First thing we're going to do, so I don't forget later, is set this to fire ability. I'm going to create a few variables. First is targets. This will be uh, BP enemy. And this will be an array. Next, we'll set the uh, max targets. This will just be an int. The max. Oops. Max missiles. Actually, this will count. It will also be the int going to compile so we can set the defaults for this. For max targets I'll set it as 3. For missile count I'll set it as 6. We also need to keep track of the arrows which will be a BP target arrow and that will also be an array. So we can just start by dragging out, control dragging out arrows and do a for each loop. For each of these, we're just going to destroy. This is the cleanup when the gameplay ability is finished. This gameplay ability will start the same as uh, they generally do. Just get avatar actor. Cast that to the third person character. And we're going to promote this to a variable. Let's just call that character. Call commit ability. Make sure that the cost of the uh, gameplay ability is used. We're then going to call our wait input release. So when you click the fire button for this ability, it will uh, go in here, um, that 
exec pin will end when you release and it'll go down here. So first we're going to call a function. We call this find target. This is so that when you click fire, it will immediately find a target. And then we will call our task wait delay. We'll set this to uh, 0.1. We'll call find target again. Very important that you put this on if, on finish, otherwise it'll just go immediately. And then we'll, we, we will loop back to the task wait delay, but only in the case of, I'm holding B, click, the target links. is less than max targets. So when this is true, we're going to reroute back to task wait delay. That's not good. All right, I guess I can't add the reroute nodes quite like that, or I'm just doing something wrong. So we'll just drag it all the way to here. And then make it look pretty. So as long as we haven't filled up the target array up to max targets amount, it will go back Otherwise, the exec will just end. And then it'll effectively just do nothing. So then on release, we want to first do another branch. This will check if the target's length is greater than zero. So if there were no targets selected, there's no reason to continue. And we just call end ability from here. And remember, end ability needs to be called at the end of all execution paths. Otherwise, calling the gameplay ability a second time will just not work. So in here, we're going to call fire missile. And then we're going to create another loop. Just copy and paste that down there. We're going to leave this time the same, but they're independent values. You can acquire your targets at whatever speed and then fire other missiles at whatever other speed. So first we need another variable. We're going to set this name as fire index. It will be an int. And this is effectively uh, tracking through a loop of missile count, which uh, index we're at. It's going to control drag this out. I want to add one to it. And then drag it back out onto this pin for the set. You see, I almost dragged it out from the wrong place. It needs to be on finish. Next, we're going to call fire missile again. And then we'll make sure that the fire index is less than missile count.
If it is, we keep looping. And when it is not, we call endability. Alright, so fire target. We first want to drag in the character. We're going to call calc firepoint, the function we made previously. Double click that, you can see that it's basically just figuring out the location and rotation of the firepoint. We're going to use line trace by channel. So actually I'll use that to get back into third person character. If you remember from a previous video, the capsule component collision is set to ignore for visibility. The mesh is also set to ignore for visibility. So we're going to use the camera for the trace channel. Start location will be this. The end location will be the rotator. Oh, actually, let me just drag that in. That'll give me the get rotation x vector. We want to then multiply that by a float. So we can right click here, set it to float. We'll just make that 5,000. And then we're going to add that to start value. And that is the end. So we drag out, or we can right click this, do a split, but it takes up a massive amount of room, goes way down there. We can drag that out, break hit result. I want to open that up, we need the hit actor, which we're going to cast to BP enemy character. And then we can go close this back up so it doesn't take up a ton of room. With that, we're going to make sure that it's not already a target. So if targets contains this value, we want to just end. So we're going to not put anything on the true value, the true pin. We're then going to save this as a local variable, just call it target. And I put this on the wrong pin. Let's put, the, put that back down on false. Uh, then we're going to add it to the target array. And then we're going to spawn the target arrow. This will be above the target we just targeted. So I'm going to do get target because this is now a local variable. However, there are many get targets and it is down at the bottom. I want to get the actor location. And I'm going to add 200 above the uh, the enemy character. And if you remember from before, this value needs to be set to the character. We 
also want to keep track of the arrows, so we're going to add this to the arrow array. Lastly, when the enemy character moves, not in this video, but eventually, uh, we want the arrow to stay on it. So then we're going to call attach actor to actor. The actor being attached is, of course, the arrow. The parent actor is the target. And this should be keep world. So to test this, we need to make sure that is the default ability on the third person character. And we'll go and make a few extra copies. So I'm holding down the, the left mouse button. You can see that it targeted those three. If I target more, it doesn't care. And then I let go and it deletes the arrows. So lastly, we want to actually fire their missiles, which we do by spawning. Oops, let me drag that out. We will use the character's actor location. We'll put this at 150 above it. And then we want a little random rotation. So we're going to use Random unit vector in cone in degrees. Set that to 75 degrees and we'll set the initial direction as up. Drag that in there, it will give us the rotation from x vector. And then from the swarm missile, we need to get the projectile movement component. And we're going to call set homing target component. So this value will be set to one of the targets. So we're going to use the fire index, we're going to use the modulus operator, and for this we'll use the target length. So modulus is an operator which is basically the remainder of a division. So if the targets in our case, we have three targets, the fire index starts at zero, zero divided by three, the remainder is zero. For one, it's one. For two, it's two. And then when it gets to three again, three divided by three is one with no remainder. So then the value is zero. So basically, it's just modulus is giving you the values zero to one minus the, the, the value that you put in here. We're going to use that to get the target based on that index. And then we need to send in a component. So we'll use get root component. So 
So if we go back and play this, you can see it's targeting, release, fires off the missiles, but then they go right down towards its feet. So if that happens in, uh, in your case, that's because in Swarm Missile, forgot to set the gravity to zero on the movement component. So they're each getting two missiles. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, you know what to do. If you have suggestions on future content or abilities you would like to see, let me know down below.